Hey you guys, what's going on? So in this video, we're going to be checking out this little prickly forest skink enclosure that I've put together. So stick around for the video, really hope you guys enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe before you leave. To get started on this build, I'm using a brand new 60 by 45 by 45 Exoterra enclosure and the first thing I do is rip out the back on this thing. As per usual, I'm using the Bastion foam boards, the insulation boards you can get from Bunnings. Super easy to cut up and stuff. I find them a little bit easier to work with compared to the Knauf boards. Uh, they also have that kind of texture to them as well rather than a soft surface just so the, the actual tile point didn't get adhered to them super well. But yeah, just pull out the foam cutter like usual and start carving away on this stuff. It's super easy to carve these ones too. They're a little bit less dense than the other Knauf boards. And I thought this time before putting in the actual boards, you know, and silicon them into place, I might just kind of do a bit of rough carving on there just to kind of take the edges down a little bit and kind of do some of the basic carving before it actually goes into the enclosure. This enclosure in particular is not going to be anything too crazy. I'm going to kind of let the plants grow in and do that kind of crazy look for me. I want it to kind of really resemble some nice Mossman Gorge rocks and, you know, just that kind of big bouldery looking stuff that's kind of covered in lichen and moss and bits and pieces. Part of the background on this is I actually want to kind of keep the the boulder look really big. I don't want to kind of do small intricate little carving bits and pieces all over the enclosure. I kind of want to keep it kind of big and bold and just kind of look like a couple of big nice big boulders. So as per standard I'm using the Gorilla Glue. This stuff really dries really nice and hard and kind of along the way on this one as well and and other builds I'm starting to use some really big skewers and they just kind of help hold the foam in place too just while the glue is actually drying and you can kind of snap them off later or, or you know pull them out and cut them off and you know it doesn't really affect the build whatsoever because you're covering it in tile pointing anyway but it just helps kind of hold the actual uh, fake boulders and bits and pieces into place and you can kind of really foam up an enclosure real quick with it You can see that I'm just pushing the skewer in there into the foam, the green bastion foam behind there, just to kind of really secure it. I just pushed a few of the excess off cuts of that foam underneath there, just kind of act as a bit of a block, just something for it to kind of weigh in on, just while it dries. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just cutting up a few little blocks of foam and I'm going to put these and glue these all together and eventually carve them out to kind of form little boulders of their own. And these are just so I can have a couple of rocks that I can essentially put around the place that match the decor inside the enclosure, match the background. And you know, it just becomes kind of uniform. And if I decide that I don't like them down the line, I can always pull them out and get rid of them. They're not a hard, hard piece of the background. Super simple to put these things together as well. I'm just using a little bit of Gorilla Glue on each one, trying to keep the glue kind of central on the boards as well, because I am going to be carving out a good portion of them. 
and then just stacking them on top of each other and I can always make them smaller later on just with the foam carver as you see here I just spend a bit of time just kind of roughly carving them out giving them a bit of shape but yeah just they're not going to be anything spectacular they're just kind of nice a nice little round boulder that's what you kind of find around a lot of these river systems and stuff when you're in far north Queensland definitely an area of the country that I'd love to get back to. I really did enjoy spending a bit of time up there with some family and just really sightseeing around the place. It was fantastic. You can see here I'm just kind of roughing it in with a bit of 60 grit sandpaper as well just to take a few of those harsher lines out of there and give it a little bit more of a smoother appearance over what the foam carver can do. And here we come with the first coat of tile pointing. Now, as per usual, this coat's kind of put on a little bit thinner than usual. It's a bit of a priming layer, and I'm not doing anything spectacular with the colour or anything, of course, yet, because you're not going to see any of this long term anyway. You can see that I've spent a bit of time actually taping up all of the black edges and things on the Exoterra enclosure as well, as I didn't want any of those to get ruined. Man, if this stuff gets stuck on it, it really grips to it. One of my enclosures, I spilt a tiny little bit in the middle of the bot bottom kind of channel of it, and it just, <laughs> no matter what I can do, without busting over the enclosure or whatever, I can't get it off perfectly. Okay, now we're on to coat two. So this coat's going on a little bit thicker, a little bit more durable, and we're going to let this one dry in for a fair bit too, because I'm actually putting it on reasonably chunky. Just making sure to get into every little nook and cranny. I'm spending a little bit of time trying to smooth it out a little bit too, just because... I don't want 100% to have all these paint paintbrush strokes and stuff in there. It's honestly probably the most time consuming portion of making all your backgrounds is the amount of painting you have to do and the amount of time you have to wait in between coats. A lot of the time I'm waiting anywhere from 24 to 36 hours in between coats depending on how thick I put the one prior on. So now we're mixing up the third coat and this time I put a little bit of oxide in there too. Nice grey oxide, I think it's called bluestone oxide. This just kind of matches in with some of the, the uh, kind of reference photos and things that I got from Mossman Gorge, a little bit more of a greyer tone to the rock. So I did actually go over and sand down some of the harder edges again on that, that coat prior to doing this kind of black wash all over it. Definitely looks very stark in the video as to how black it's coming through, but it does kind of get blotted out a little bit as you will see down the line. You can see there that I made a big mess to and knocked over that container, but just no worries, you know, I just used that all back onto the enclosure background. I'm going to clean up the base of the enclosure down the line anyway. So this layer is just going to be putting a little bit of depth through the enclosure, just a little bit of a wash because you don't want it to be 100% stark grey. And as you'll see down the line here, I do have a bit of a play around with colours and things throughout it anyway. The sponge that you can see sitting up there on the right hand side is just a little cheap sponge that I picked up from the art section at Bunnings. It's good to just kind of help dab around, dab a little bit of pattern onto the enclosure here and there. Kind of just wash things in a little bit, leave a few dark recesses, bits and pieces across the place. Of course the boulders that I made up are going to get the same treatment as the rest of the enclosure too. I want everything to at least look very uniform. So 
these skinks aren't really massive climbers. So this is why I'm kind of not mucking around with heaps of ledges and things for this enclosure. They love to go and get down in amongst the soil and leaf litter and the dirt. So the enclosure background on this one is reasonably simple. Uh, definitely didn't take too much time to paint it versus some of the more complicated ones that I've done in the past. Uh, but it, you know, nonetheless, I think it's a cool little thing. It's a bit of an experiment background too. I liked playing around with a lot of the colors and things on this one. You can see I'm almost just lightening up the rocks a little bit with a bit of that sponge and dab it on a bit of that grey paint. I kind of put it all over the enclosure too, just lightening it up a little bit. I didn't like how dark it actually ended up. So, you know, it's all planned around. It's all a bit of an experiment and fun at the end of the day. Now, this is where I really got carried away. I started playing around with greens, looking at some of my reference material and how mossy the rocks were and things. So this is where I got to have a little bit of fun and really decided that, you know what, I wanted to do something completely different to what any of my other enclosures look like and keep a little bit more of the green hue to the enclosure. And I was quite happy with how it turned out. Spent a bit of time ripping all the masking tape off everything, making sure that I got every little bit of tile pointing off. I didn't want to have any of that hanging around. Okay, so here you can actually see that I'm making up one of my drainage holes for, for the enclosure. So if it does overfill with a bit of water, thanks to the, the Miss King, or you know, I'm getting a little bit heavy handed on it. And this is just a way that I can actually stick a little hose down it and siphon out a bit of water. I just drill a whole bunch of drill, drill holes with a step drill around the base of it too, just so then the water can actually flow freely into the actual drainage hole, uh, the drainage pipe rather. And I let this sit for about 24 hours just with a bit of silicon on there just to kind of cure it into place and make sure that it's nice and firm on the glass bottom. As per all of these Exoterra enclosures, I black out the sides using some adhesive vinyl. It's really easy to apply and just make sure that you can't see any of that ugly foam down the sides of the enclosure. Most people use soapy tint or water when they're applying, applying the vinyl. I actually just use F10 just because it's already pre-made in a bottle there and you know, it's not going to hurt anything down the line. And it seems to do a good enough job just for applying this sort of simple stuff. I can't wait till one day this whole rack is made with custom enclosures and looks all nice and neat and uniform. It is all a bit of trial and error at the end of the day. I'm experimenting with a whole bunch of new plants and seeing how things kind of go down the line. So here you can see that I'm putting in the drainage layer. I get these clay balls from Fish Organics Reptile Supplies in amongst all the other stuff in these bioactive kits. Next steps to throw down a bit of drainage. I'm actually enjoying putting down two layers of fly screen in all of these enclosures these days, just because I find that sometimes the dirt can still kind of seep through one layer of fly screen and that the mesh isn't just fine enough. Next step is I'm actually putting in some organic compost. This is just to kind of help give the plants a bit of nutrients while they're in the soil here. I want to try to really make sure that these plants survive. And these plants being rainforest species as well will probably enjoy being in a slightly more nutrient rich environment. I also use a bit of coir peat too, again from those bioactive kits that Cory supplies from Fish Organics. This soil layer is going to be such like a kind of mix overall.
I really wanted to put these kind of boulders on a different angle to what the boulders in the background are. I wanted them to kind of jut out at different angles just to kind of really give it a bit of a different, different look. Now here you can see some of the soil that I'm actually using. I got these bags from Bunnings. Just basically a really cheap organic compost, just making sure there's no kind of crazy fertilizers or anything in there that I think is going to hurt the animal. And just a plain old garden soil as well. Probably the majority of this enclosure is actually built up with these these bagged goods and to be honest they weren't overly expensive they were probably four or five dollars a bag mixed in with some good organic compost and that coir peat again you know it's, it's a bit of a big blend of soils and I'm going to see how it goes but I think for these kind of more rainforest dedicated terrariums it might work pretty well. I got to go and get some few bits and pieces from my new favourite nursery. This is just up the road from me too, so I thought I'd add in a few clips just to kind of give you an idea of what an Australian nursery looks like if you haven't already seen one. An Australian native nursery, I should say. The benefit of this place is you know everything's at least coming out of Australia. It's no kind of fancy plants from around the world or anything like that. I can't believe I didn't discover this place earlier and it's going to become such a resource for me to go and find bits and pieces and that's where I picked up a few ferns for this enclosure. I can definitely see myself spending way too much time and money up here to be quite frank but I think it's definitely going to be the best resource that I've found for a long time. So you can see here that I've come back with a couple of soft tree ferns for this enclosure. Now these guys can grow super, super big. So it's something that I'm going to have to definitely take into consideration. I might have to learn how to kind of prune them back or, or see how we go just with the height. But, um, you know, worst case, if they have to come out of the enclosure and go into my garden down the line, I'm not totally opposed to that either. I think they're just awesome trees to have. You can see here that the root ball in particular is pretty dense and you'll notice that I didn't actually completely rinse the roots 100% free. Basically what I did is knock out a lot of fertilizer pellets and bits and pieces that I could see. But one thing that I have learned about ferns of all varieties is they don't do really well when they're actually completely stripped down to their roots and being planted into something completely new. So I tried to take the majority of it off while still keeping a little bit of their original soil and roots intact. This will allow hopefully the plant not to stress so much in the transition, but at the same time give me a bit kind of best of both worlds. Obviously I want the plant to survive and do well in this terrarium, but I also don't want fertilizers and things necessarily being introduced and being becoming harmful. A little bit of a top up on a few extra soils, just kind of fill in some gaps. And then we're going to get on to planting a few mosses. These are just a few bits of moss that I actually just got from around the house. I'm putting it right underneath where the mist king's actually going to be misting just to kind of keep them nice and hydrated. I'm going to see how they go. I haven't really played around with too many native mosses inside of terrariums, but I figure this one's a little bit more rainforest based, so it might be all right. And here you can see a few natural substrates and bits and pieces um, that I actually picked up locally. They've been drying out on the turtle pond for a couple of weeks now and I've just been keeping eyes on them for bugs and leeches and bits and pieces. But yeah, a bit of pandanus leaf there, a bit of vine cutting as well and some nice bark as well for the prickly forest skink to really get under and hide in. I wanted to make this enclosure look really nice and natural like a bit of rainforest, not only for the animal itself, but for me, because I figure this is a kind of animal that I'm not going to see all that often as, as per their nature. It's just not that kind of critter, unfortunately, but I wanted it to kind of grow in and just look like a beautiful little rainforest box. I really love this type of vine. I've used it in my rough scale enclosure build before. That's really cool. 
You can see here that I'm going to go through a few little bits of sticks and twigs and things where I've actually pulled them out of my Slater, Slater breeding tub. I've been kind of breeding a few little babies here and there, but just to trying to get the cleanup crew kind of established in there. The skink will probably eat quite a few of these, I reckon, just being a smaller animal and smaller slaters. I've got to whack some springtails in there too, of course, otherwise, you know, wouldn't be 100% bioactive without the little tiny cleanup crew. I gave the whole enclosure a good mist down too. Just to really try to wet those roots on those plants and I will kind of keep doing this for a few weeks to come. And I thought while I'm at it, I'd pick a few worms out of the worm farm that I created as well and pop them across into the terrarium. And these guys can kind of just help turn over that, that soil and turn it into nice worm castings and help fertilize the plants as well. So last but not least, as far as electronics are concerned, I'm going to be putting in one of these Get Your Pet Right 7% UVB T5s. This is going to be a great little addition to this. And uh, yeah, I think my little skink is going to really enjoy it. And for the time being as well, until I re reorganize the tank next to him, I'm actually going to just scoot it over so both tanks are actually getting a little bit of UVB above them. I'm really loving all my T5 fittings, and it doesn't matter the brand necessarily either, but the 7% on this uh, Get Your Pet Right version is awesome, just because it does go through a bit of mesh, so you will lose a little bit of UVB as it punches through any mesh. So having a 7% versus a 5% is just that little bit better. Now here you can see the little devil that's going to be going into this terrarium. This is the first time I've seen him in a couple of weeks, to be quite frank, because I don't see him all that often. I think this is a species that, you know, they tend to be a little bit more active and out and about if there are a few more of them in an enclosure. There is a second little prickly forest skink that I do have here that will be going into this enclosure eventually as well, but I do want to grow it up for a fair while before it goes in with this monster. Unfortunately, this is about the best footage that I'm going to see of this guy as well, because once he went into this enclosure, very unwillingly, I didn't see a hell of a lot of him for probably about a week or so afterwards. And uh, it's not going to be the kind of animal that will display all that well until it gets a little bit more dense in there, I think. But all in all, I'm really happy with how this little rainforest box turned out. Really simple background, but you can see that in amongst all the plants and bits and pieces, it turns out quite effective. It kind of does look like there's just like larger mossy boulders everywhere in there. And I think it's quite cool and something that I haven't really seen done, done before. So yeah. I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this enclosure. So thanks for watching the video guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed the build process of this one. This one was quite enjoyable and something a little bit different to what I usually do as well. So I got quite a bit of a kick out of it. If you did like the video, make sure to drop the video a like, drop a comment down below and also subscribe before you end up leaving. And thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you all on the next video.